Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Back with you with another spirit-led teaching. Uh, coming to part three of this crucial teaching, this crucially important teaching, that Christ is the true light of the world and the word pertaining to the Bible, not Jesus. And I want to say that one more time. Christ is the true light of the world and the word pertaining to the Bible, the written word, not Jesus. Jesus was the son of man. He was born under the law. That's flesh. Christ was the son of God. He was, he's the righteousness of the law. He was in Jesus. It was forewritten that God would come in physical form. And seeing that it was written that God would come in physical form, it meaning he would come in the it means he would come in the flesh, but God himself cannot become flesh. It's not like God in the spirit became flesh. No, God came in a physical body and carried out an eternal work in that physical body under the law at the cross. Let us go to the teachings. We have to make that distinction because if you are truly, Jesus said in Luke 14, 27, whosoever does not take up his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Here's why. Because you're not going from the flesh to the spirit. You're following Jesus in the flesh, but you don't know him as Christ in his true state in the spirit. So when you take up your cross, you're crucified to the flesh. You can't follow Jesus in the flesh because you're crucified to the flesh. Your flesh can't follow him, but your spirit is then in, in, in Christ in the spirit, who is the true savior. Because Jesus being the son of man, born under the law, could not save anyone because mankind can't save anyone. Mankind can have religion, but in religion there is no salvation. There is no salvation. And one of the purposes of the manifestation of the son of God in the flesh was to free us from the law, to free us from sin, and to free us from religion, and to also free us from the flesh. So we were we were... We were saved from what we could not be saved by. You have to know what you're saved from and who you're saved to. You have to know who you're saved from and who you're saved to. Don't you know we're saved from Christ? We're saved from Jesus to Christ. And the reason we're saved from Jesus to Christ is to prevent us from following Jesus and be adopted into the salvation of Christ, where we're adopted as the children of God. Because the purpose for which God became flesh was not to save us. It was to take the, the, the wrath of, uh, uh, of God upon that flesh at the cross while he carried out that eternal work in the spirit. Where we could receive the adoption of the spirit. You see, he became flesh so we could be brought back into the spirit. And once we're brought back into the spirit, he through our transformed spirit will become flesh. And we get to live in that resurrection power according to the fruit of the Spirit. We get to live in that resurrection power according to the fruit of the Spirit. Remember when before Jesus was resurrected from the cross, he had the sin of the world upon him and his disciples saw him and knew him. But then when he was resurrected by that non-racial, non-gender fruit of righteousness and he was sitting at the shore side and it says his disciples saw him but they did not know him. You see, who you look like in the light is completely different from what you looked like in the dark. In the dark, the people that saw, they, they saw you and they knew you. But once the fruit of light is manifesting through you, they're going to still see you in the flesh, but they ain't going to know you anymore in the spirit. Because you're in the light of the countenance of Christ's spirit, you're operating in that resurrection power, that resurrection power. You can be alone, but you ain't going to never again be lonely. Loneliness will be a thing of the past. Now I want to say that one more time. You can be alone, but you'll never be lonely. Let us get started the teaching. Let us go to John 5, 39 through 42. Jesus tells the religious people, the Pharisees, 
who, who, who followed the letter of the law. He, who, those who were against him. He said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life? Now remember, religious people trust in scripture. The, the Bible-based church, which you were saved from because you could not be saved by, they trust in scripture. That's why they're the biblical church. They trust in scripture. He said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life? Now that's foolish. Scripture can't give you life. Scripture can't give you life. There's no life in scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. See, Scripture points you to Christ. Christ in the flesh, what he spoke in the flesh as the Son of Man, pointed you to him in his true state or in his true origin in the Spirit as the Son of God. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Now, life only comes from the Son of God. It can't come from the Son of Man. So he's speaking of his, uh, of himself in his true state as Christ. In his eternal state. I receive not honor from mankind. Why? Because that's religion. I receive not honor from mankind. But I know that you have not the love of God in you because if they had the love of God in them, they would have light in him. They would have known who he was. They would have known who was in him if they had the love of God in them because the love of God is Christ and Christ was in Jesus. So if they had the love of God in him, they would have knew, they would have known Christ was in Jesus. But they didn't know that because they didn't have the love of God in them. He said, I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor for, that cometh from God only? Now that's church people. Church people go honor one another with these little titles and these little compliments. And they go honor one another in the flesh but they're going to be in offense to the one that comes in the light of Christ in the spirit because they're not in Christ's spirit. They're following Jesus according to the letter of Christ, but they're not in the gospel of Christ. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, for there is one that will accuse you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Now they so claimed they trusted in, in the teachings of Moses, but they were liars because Moses spoke of, of Jesus coming. So they were lying right there. They, they didn't trust uh, in Moses' teachings. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. He wrote of me. He said, had you believed Moses, you would believe me because he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? If you ain't going to believe what he wrote of me, how shall you believe me? Because if you ain't going to believe his writings, how shall you believe my words? He's making a distinction between the written word in the flesh and the living word in the spirit. So they were liars. They were, they, they were religious hypocrites. Now Jesus wrote I mean, they claim to be uh, disciples of Moses and Moses wrote of what was to come. He wrote of what was standing right before their face, that that was coming. And what he wrote of was standing right before their face and they denied it. In the churches today, in the Bible-based churches, oh, they're vigorously following scripture. But these people will deny light in a second. They'll deny it in a second. Claiming to be following the teachings of Jesus at the same time, denying what he taught. Denying the very light that he brings to them, they'll deny. It. Because they follow Jesus. They follow Jesus. They follow Jesus. If you're following Jesus, if the churches were truly, the biblical churches were truly following Jesus, you wouldn't have no biblical churches. You would only have gospel churches. But and if they were following Jesus in the flesh, then they, you still wouldn't have any biblical churches because they'd all be crucified according to the flesh. Don't you know Jesus went to the cross? So if you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, 
What are you still doing here? You, you're supposed to be hanging on the cross. You got to get crucified. Because if you say you are following Jesus and you're not crucified in the flesh, then you're not following Jesus. Then you're not following Jesus according to the flesh. You might be following the letter of Christ, but you, you're not in the salvation of Christ. You're not in the salvation of Christ. When, when you say you're a follower of Jesus, you have to be fruitful to what you're actually saying. Let us go to John 6.63. He says, it is the spirit that makes a lie. The flesh profits nothing. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that makes a lie. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, he did not say the words I have written unto you are spirit and they are life. He said, the words I speak unto you in the first state as Christ, they are spirit and they are life. Now, let's go back to the beginning of that scripture. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. You know what Jesus, you know what he's saying to you right there? In, in that state as the son of man in the flesh, he can profit you nothing. But in his true state in the spirit, only can he make you alive. But the purpose of, of, of Christ coming in Jesus was to take that which was born under the law to redeem us that was under the law to the cross that we might receive the adoption of sons through that eternal work that was carried out in that physical body as it hung on that cross. That's the work we got to enter into. We got to go from that, that, that biblical faith of working our faith according to the flesh to being born into Christ where we literally become a work of faith by the fruit of the Spirit. There's a difference between working your faith and becoming a work of faith. Those that are following Jesus are working their faith. They're biblically active according to scripture. But we that are in Christ, we truly become an eternal work of faith. And the difference between the two is as opposite as night and day. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. Then he, that's, that's him in his true state as Christ. In his true origin. Oh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Second Corinthians 3, 6. It's also important to make that distinction between the written word and the living word. And here's why. Who also had made us able ministers of the new covenant. In Christ, you become an able minister by the ability of Christ of the new covenant to teach the New Testament. Not of the letter, because the letter kills. You see, you're going to find Christ in the, you're going to find Jesus in the letter. Now, if you're following Jesus, you're following the letter. But of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. This is why Jesus in the written word, by sight in the flesh, continually in everything he wrote pointed you to himself in his true state as Savior in the Spirit, the Christ, the anointed one. Why? Because the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. If you're following Jesus according to the letter, you're still under the law. In the spirit, you, you make what he did there of none effect. You make what he did there of none effect. Or what was done through him there. Let us go to John 7, 37, 38. John 7, 37, 38. John 7, 37, 38. 37. The last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man or woman thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. 
Well, what are they going to drink? What are they going to drink? Watch. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall, belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's the manifold wisdom of God. That is the manifold wisdom of Christ. That is the manifold wisdom of Christ. If anyone thirsts for that living water, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. That's the manifold wisdom of God. Not a river, but multiple rivers. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's the manifold wisdom of God. You see, when you're born of Christ, when you're adopted into Christ, through what he did through Jesus under the, under the law at the cross, that eternal work he carried out. You see, the righteousness of God is Christ, which was in Jesus, carrying out that eternal work under the law at the cross to deliver us from the law that we could be brought back unto grace, to deliver us from the Bible because we could not be saved by the Bible, to deliver us from the biblical church because we could not be saved by the biblical church. To deliver us from Judaism because you could not be saved by Juda Judaism. To deliver you from being a Jew because you could not be saved because you were a Jew. To deliver you from your blackness because you could not be saved by your blackness. To deliver you from your whiteness because you could not be saved by your, by your whiteness. White Christianity, black Christianity, just like Judeo-Christianity, is false Christianity. It is, it is not of Christ. It is not of Christ. When you're following Jesus, you get to keep that mess. When, you go, when you're adopted as the son of God, you're set free from that mess. You're set free from that. Because that is not of God. That is not of God. That is not of the true Christ. So out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That is the eternal man, uh, manifold wisdom of Christ. Which the biblical church... The denominational biblical churches or non-denominational biblical churches have to receive. And the Judeo synagogues, they have to receive it as well. Because when you when you're adopted into the family of God, which is in Christ, Jesus, the purpose of the flesh was to take you from the law to grace. But what took place at the cross was not a work of the flesh. It was an eternal work of the righteousness of God in the flesh, but it wasn't the flesh. To bring you back to that true state of salvation in Christ in the spirit. Now, once you are in the salvation of Christ spirit, you're in the gospel of the spirit because the gospel is Christ and Christ alone is the gospel. But you also enter into that saving knowledge, that salvational knowledge of the living Christ. This is the rivers of of living water that he's talking about. And these teachings are so crucially important that there's going to be a continuation of these teachings. Usually it's it's three teachings and then that's it. But this is so important because this is the foundation of everything. There will be a continuation of it in the next three teachings. I love you and I thank you. And I look forward to you in the next series. Amen. Amen.